for the company that had to revise its strategy because its listing didn't get the support it had hoped for. We're talking about Infosource, the company that's listed in the building and construction sector on the JSC, and that was in July last year. Le Roux, uh, the chief executive officer, uh, joins us uh, in studio. I know when we first had a discussion, there was uh, very much this uh, stigma hanging around Infosource. Uh, people were saying that uh, you're a, a business uh, that, or it was you're being opportunistic in coming to the market. Uh, talk of um, being held together by sticky tape and plaster. Is it a, a stigma that's been difficult to rid yourselves of? Byron, thanks for having me. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, if that's where you start off. But like I said in the beginning, when we started, if you start off in that position, it's so much nicer and better when you prove it wrong. And I think coming out. With our hearing the way we did, we are proving that wrong. Um, everything, as far as synergies are concerned within the group, if you look at the growth we had, anywhere between 15 to 25 percent on average through the mining operations, and between 8 and 10 percent of that is created because of the synergy in the group. You know, and that, that I think, lays to bed this whole debate about that. Um, as far as, as I'm concerned, I think the market should be concerned as well. Good uh, morning. Sorry, just to correct sure. you, you said the buildings and constructions. Yeah, of course, you, you positioned yeah, yourself in the mining uh, company. And, and I'll take care. But you listed in, in, correct, yes, in, in, the, in the buildings and construction sector. This morning, uh, you produced uh, maiden uh, year in numbers. Uh, you did marginally miss uh, the forecast that you set out in your initial prospectus uh, in terms of revenue and uh, headline earnings uh, per share. You did have to revise the strategy. We'll, we'll get uh, into that in just a little while because you didn't get the support that you wanted at listing, you did revise your numbers down and you've beaten those rather handsomely. Yes, and I think that's indicative of where we were heading. You know, like I said in the beginning, this is a bus, the engine has started, it's time to get on, you know, it's definitely going upwards. Um, we are very satisfied with the results we made. Um, of course, those forecasts is not an exact science. Sure. So where we are, we are very happy. And like I said, if you go through the projections, you'll see that there's been excessive growth. Um, in all of the mining operations uh, in this specific operation. Um, you know, that, that 1% or whatever that you offer at the moment, I can, everybody's heard the whole song and dance about load shedding and, and that we're not even affected by that. As a company, we've taken, you know, control of that course. We've installed one MVA generators at these operations. Where we were affected was the, you know, almost 90 days of exasperating rain. Um, towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year. That is where mining slows down and that does have an effect. So the, the power outage is having no impact uh, on the business you're saying, but, uh, but the rain has. Can you, can you give us an, an idea to, to what degree it uh, might have hurt your bottom line? Look, uh, it's difficult to say now exactly, but to, to put it into perspective, if you take the Del Sand operation for specific uh, reasons, it's the first time in 10 years that that operation actually shut down for two days because of the rain. Um, it does have an effect not so much to the outward production of the mine, but more the inwards because you just break everything down with the earth moving if it rains that much. I can't really say at bottom line, and I can maybe contribute a little bit of that to the one or two cents that you're talking about. Just going through the numbers, uh, one number that is uh, mightily impressive is your gross margin of almost 52% against the forecast of uh, just over 26%. Uh, and that's rising from 20% in 2007. How did that come about? Look, uh, first of all, it's very important, and that's why I think these results are so important, because this is now giving the whole market a form of history to reflect it. The, the, the reflections of those numbers are towards the previous numbers before the synergy took place, and therefore we experienced that growth, and that's exactly what we planned you know, on, 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 on achieving. So I think that's where it, where it came in most importantly to have that tremendous growth. And then also by having the, the well infrastructure within the group and the financial abilities, we could expand tremendously on both. I mean, Littleton is, uh, was capex of just under 4 million, some fleet and plant. There's two plants, the Pluto and the Net, uh, giving us 20% more for a full year. And then at Delft, we had... Uh, new line of text, uh, uh, T-type classifiers, new scrubbers, giving you 20% input, and then that enables us to put in that uh, fifth dryer, which is already, as it is, one of the biggest drying facilities of its kind in the country. Well, those are major kickers uh, that saw you beat your revised uh, uh, headline earnings forecast, which went, uh, which was uh, 37 cents a share. Uh, of course, you did come at, uh, at, at 46 cents, but, or were there some other factors at play? 
No, definitely. The mining operations uh, was the major kicker um, in this the growth that we had. Once again, you know, if you look at the Littleton operation, it's got the marble hall side to it, which is the Lymatic Dolomite. Um, there we've had a very, very nice boost as far as product is concerned, exactly because Delft brought these adhesive market to the table. Um, as far as the powders are concerned, we're really getting better volumes and better margins. Mm. So take us through some of uh, the operations uh, like uh, uh, Littleton, like Delft, and, and, and the prospects going forward. Look, uh, at Littleton, is probably the most exciting, I think, for us and for the market as far as the is concerned is since coming on board, we had a CPR content business report on it done, um, and there was a whole pit redesign on that. So with that pit redesign, we've extended the life of mine from, I think it was 11.7 years. It's now 28.9 years on that life of mine, and we increased production through flow by about 20, 22, and 22 and percent. So, I mean, that is, better than that it doesn't get for that. Is that a mine that you bought ahead of the listing? Correct. Littleton Dolomite is the, is the Dolomite mine just off Puerto Avenue in Centurion. So really you, you've, uh, you bought that from. I'm sure that they're going to be kicking themselves at this stage of the game if you've uh, more than doubled the, the, the lifespan of uh, that particular mine. Well, you know, luckily, like I said, once again, the structure of, of infrastructure is such a nature that uh, bottom line uh, employees and people are still involved in the same operation so there's a there's a beneficiation right through for everybody but i mean that was a natural thing to happen for us as infrastructure since if you take littleton dolomite into account it's been a mine for 80 years and the way they mined 80 years or 50 years back 30 years back and today is different today and night and that enabled us to do what we did on that so for for littleton that is really exciting um like i said at delft we had some major expansions as far as fleet is concerned, as, as far as the production plant is concerned. So that gave us a tremendous boost. Um, we commissioning in August this year that first dryer unit there, it's giving us extra 10,000 tons of dry material, dry silica, alluvial silica for the market. Um, so yes, we're very excited about that. And then of course is the Pinot Sport crushing operation. So you said Pinot Sport uh, crushing operation. You pointed to uh, the, this uh, object on the table. Tell us, what is it? Well, this is a, a cordial sample of, of the silica quartz that we plan on mining at the uh, Dinosh Pro Crushing operation. The quartz drilling was done. What's uh, the prognosis? Very, very good. We're very excited about it. Um, analysis has been done uh, by SecPoint on this. Um, our major role players, uh, as far as customer base is concerned, are all very excited about the results of this. We found it to be definitely in quantity and quality a viable operation as we anticipated. Um, you know, we scheduled it through the run of this year. As far as schedule is concerned, we are um, almost happy to say ahead of schedule. Our uh, applications has been handed in to DME and because there's an existing uh, new order mining right approved on this property already, it's basically it's a new application, but it goes into the same line. I did say that uh, we talk about the, the strategic changes that you had to make because you didn't raise uh, the, the required uh, uh, funds uh, at listing. Uh, might those come back onto the agenda uh, as, as uh, you build up uh, working capital? Yeah, look, uh, of course, this, all of the operations are very cash generative. So it puts us in a nice situation as far as projects of these are concerned. Um, we have secured a bond. Um, as far as uh, infrastructure is concerned, so that it enables us to go into these capex projects. Should we run into a need for them, and um, they haven't been accessed, so we are secure in that in that you know field. Like mm -hmm. I said, in, as far as Pinot uh, Sports concerned, the projected production rate for that the operation is 1.2 million tons of of product per year. It's going to give you at the bottom line another. No, somewhere about 50 million. Very quickly, because we are out of, out of time, a headline earnings per share this time around of 46 cents. What are you projecting for 2009? Look, uh, we on our PLS, I think I'll leave it to the analysts at this stage to go and look at the revised as it went through and, and on, on what we delivered this mm -hmm. year. Expecting the growth and the forecast we made on all of these projects and what we have now to go to the next year. I, I'm not going to put my head on a block right now and say, this is what we are, but I think if you revise it on the PLS, you'll be close. All right, so he's playing his cards very close to his chest, uh, Larue Ruth, the Chief Executive Officer of Infrasource. That's all from Power Lunch in association with MoneyWeb. We're talking now to CNBC US for US Scorecox, CNBC Africa, back at 4 p.m. Central African time with Regional Roundup.